Is she your favorite Kappa? Well, too bad. Nitori Kawashiro is a rather popular character in the Tall community, and popular characters usually get their own games. Sakuya got her own with Toho Luna Knights, Mistia with Mistia Izakaya, and even Marisa with Toho 18.5. It is a trend in the fandom to give characters standalone stories, but with Nitori, it took a long time before that came. Well, if you consider a long time ago to be 2014. Shoot Shoot Nitori is a fan game featuring our favorite blue haired Kappa and her friends going on an adventure across Gensokyo performing missions to get a mysterious treasure. However, how are they able to accomplish it? Well, let's take a sneaky peek. What is the game about? Well, it's supposed to be a horizontal shoot em up featuring mainly Nitori and her friends. It is mostly inspired by the game called Tumiki Fighters, which is a game you have likely never heard of, so that is likely a good sign. Just to let you know, the perspective of this video will come from the golden version of the game. All jokes aside, when you load into the game, you get loaded with many options, but it's only fair we start off with easy mode. You get a few missions to select from this Kappa, since you and your Kappa crew have heard rumors about a giant treasure hidden around Gensokyo, so it's now your job to find who owns it. There are 8 stages along your journey, 1 in the beginning, 5 in the mid game, a 6th, and an XYZ stage for the end game. You will travel along all the familiar places of Gensokyo, like from the Kappa Waterfall, the Magical Forest, and even the real world. Wow. Beginning a stage is simple. You fly around and, uh oh, fairies. A tall fan is used to slaughtering them by now, but why don't you look at that? Money. We are essentially stealing from the fairies wallets to gain score, but unlike an actual Taho game, there are other things that they can drop. Items. The main gimmick of this game is the item collection system. You see, you can find a flower and anchor flying around, and upon collecting them, it allows you to gain its power. It does sound a bit lame, but the cool part is, you can stack them for as much firepower as you need. It is stupid how much of a machine you can become, but like anything, there comes a balancing issue. So what the developers have done is, if a fairy or a bullet hits you, you lose the item. Uh, okay, so what? You lost an item. <laughs> well, here's the fun part. Boss fights are where the bullets are most plentiful, and getting hit loses literally half of your machine. <laughs> Yikes! However, the devs forgot one thing that literally makes the game so much more easier. When you get hit with items on hand, you don't die at all. The only times you lose a life is when the bullet actually hits your character without items. So you can get hit and just get back up, though it's not the smartest strategy in my opinion. It should also be noted that having too many items will hinder your speed, so moderation is key here. Since some of the items can be hit or miss, there are ones that you will likely want to keep on your journey. Before each stage, you can get item upgrades to help you. The only ones that are an absolute must in my opinion are the lives, since you will want them in the late game. However, my favorite item to use is the riot shield because, well, it's a freaking riot shield. It helps you fighting the bullets. Aside from that, that's kind of the game. <laughs> no, really. When you beat the game, there really isn't much to do. I mean, you get a couple of PNGs and ending credits, but the only thing you can do is score on the game, which I think has potential since a few of the characters have weird tech that can be exploited. But speaking of which... Characters are everything in Toho, man. Even though Nitori is the main character on the cover, it's a Toho game, so it's inevitable that there are like 30 playable characters. Of course, there are the obvious Sorno and Marisa, but we also get Sumarenko and Seki Banki of all characters. Yeah, you can tell this was released around Toho 14's heyday. Each of the characters have their own slightly specific shot type, like Nitori shooting regular bullets, Rainbow who are homing amulets, but my favorite is Marisa because... Laser. You are not able to get these characters through osmosis alone, so you must buy them at the shop. But I think it's rather hilarious that Cerno is priced at 99,999 yen. That's kind of funny, right dudes? Ha ha ha. They get progressively more expensive as the game goes on, but anything to unlock the cockroach's favorite character. Now here comes a little bit of story. When you pass the first 6 stages, there comes a stage 7 and an X, Y, and Z. In stage 7, you go to Tokyo where you fight Sumarenko a few times. She is rather annoying since her towers want to ruin my epic Lego machine setup, but the main ticket of the game is the final stage. We go through a stage made up of an 80s neon grid and the true final boss is revealed where we find out it's someone you didn't really expect. I won't spoil it, but let's just say it's someone that has not appeared in the official games. 
Now, enough about the objective things, let's talk about things I kinda like. The art style is absolutely adorable, like, I, I mean, look at the Tori, she looks like a pillow. The same case goes for the stages since it looks like a watercolor painting at times. I like how you can collect cucumbers for 2000 points since that's all be fitting for a game since Nitori is associated with them. One of the bosses is Yuiko or Kogasa, I don't know, but it's someone who's stuck in one of those jellyfish queen bubbles that you must pop. For whatever reason, that apparatus has two boom boxes for some reason, but when you beat the boss, the bubble pops and the person wakes up. The cover for the golden version of the game features Nitori in a Giorno pose, which is kinda wacky, but in the corner of the cover, you can see a familiar logo, Twilight Frontier. You may not know them by name, but they are the guys that made the tall fighting games. Now another little known fun fact about the group is that they have made fan games unaffiliated with Zun, like Megamari, a Mega Man fan game, and this one. But nowadays, they are just kinda known for delaying Goyoku Iban and making Hisulten Soku. Speaking of which, the best boss fight in the game is where you fight the golden robot himself. It's a stage battle where you destroy his rocket boots and seemingly watch the machine fall. That is, until the Moria crew resurrect him for one last battle. I could go deeper into the game, but I am too lazy for now. But I do have a few criticisms though. One of them is a lack of save data. You must beat the game in one go. I honestly thought you could pause and come back to the game later on one of my first few attempts at the game, but you must go through it all in one attempt. Maybe it's just my frog brain or weird game design, that, that's up to you. My only other criticism is how unsatisfying it is to lose your items and immediately die a second later due to bad positioning. It's a nitpick, but maybe it's also a skill issue with me, but man, will and will I ever talk about that. But if this game needs a positive summary, think of it as that shoot em up minigame from Valhalla, but with a tall skin. Or, wait a second. This game is literally unconnected marketeers. Holy crap. This game predicted Toho 18? Oh no. Oh my goodness, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, guys?